Hey guys, Mad Scientist here today, and today I'm back messing around with the science of Ruby and comparing it against real life. My other Ruby videos have been quite popular in relation to my Final Destination video. Please, do me a favour and at least watch that video. Links will be below in the description. Anyway, back to Ruby and Weiss is alive. Volume 5 has wrapped up and in Volume 6 we might be travelling to Atlas with Team Ruby, John, Nora, Ren, Crow and Oscar. Blake Belladonna and Yang Shaolong are under my microscope for today. But first, some backstory of these characters. Both had led troubled lives before arriving at Beacon. Blake was a member of the Y Fang, being a part of it through its rise of attacks against companies that have forced foreign slave labour and creating public violence. Yang nearly got herself and Ruby killed when she was younger, until Uncle Crow stepped in and saved them. While Yang was in it for the thrill, getting caught up in as many ventures as possible, Blake was 100% focused on catching the bad guy. She was so focused on why Roman Torchwick was stealing so much dust that she hadn't been sleeping. By the end of Volume 3, Yang lost her right arm to Adam Taurus, and Blake saved Yang only to run away to Men 3. Post the time skip to Volume 4 and 5, Yang receives her new arm and finds Raven's camp to find out why she left her entire Yang. She finds Weiss at the camp, and they both leave for a portal to Haven on Yang's bike. Meanwhile, Blake, a little runaway for what she thinks is right lady, arrives at Manjuri after defending the transport boat she was on from a sea dragon alongside the slightly annoying stowaway sun. Life on Manjuri is heavily influenced by the presence of White Fang, and she liberated all of Manjuri by taking back the organisation from Sianna Khan to fight at Haven. By Volume 5, Chapter 13, Blake's childhood friend, Aaliyah Amitola, disarms the bombs on the Haven Academy building. Blake disarms Adam with a double-handed punch to the back of the head, and Yang learns to control anger while running to the wreck entrance. Firstly, Blake's semblance is straight up stated to be creating shadow clones while she can escape. When we see her using the semblance for the first time, we can tell there's some substance to her shadow. As stated in my wife's video, light objects are not that far away from existence. For Blake, it's stationary hard light holograms. And for why they exist for both at long and short periods, Basically, it comes down to how long until it gets destroyed. It also explains why there is no blood on Blake in Volume 3, Chapter 11, when Adam stabs Blake. One problem, though, is when Blake's hologram looks at Yang, she is genuinely sad. However, there is an explanation for how it's possible. Assuming Blake is truly invisible to people and she sees Yang, the hologram copies Blake's movements and emotions. So Blake's fake crying to make her death seem more believable. Now, to finish off the rest of Team Ruby, we must question Yang's kinetic redistribution punching strength. To find her strongest punch, we need to find her biggest amount of damage. There are two scenes I'm playing on in this game, which I'm dubbing as the watermelon flight scene and the robot headbutt scene. First scene on the to-do list is the watermelon flight scene. The information I was able to retrieve from the scene is that Yang gets hit with Nora's watermelon hammer in less than one frame. She smashes through the roof in 27 frames and falls back through the roof to the floor in 62 frames. The Watermelon Hammer was my first thought with angular velocity to convert to linear velocity to find the force of which Yang smashes through the roof with. But the hammer doesn't move in a perfect circle. However, there's another way of finding the applied force and that's to work backwards from when Yang falls through the roof. This 
by far is the most complicated mass I've ever had to done. And I've been quite extended in my mathematics. The end goal is to find the uh, force due to mass and acceleration. To find Yang's weight, may I present the BMI equation, or body mass index equation. From the Ruby wiki, Yang's height is 1.73 meters, and looking at this picture, I would say her BMI is 23. Plugging in the numbers, I get a value of 68.8 for Yang's weight. However, BMI for females doesn't include the factors of hair length and cup size, and Yang is large and in charge. Using this picture as a reference and a ruler, her height is 7.65 centimeters and her hair length is 3.15 centimeters. Using her canon height of 1.73 meters or 173 centimeters, her hair length is 71.2 centimeters. To find the weight of Yang's hair, we multiply by the number of follicles on her head and the weight of hair per centimetre. Yang, being a blonde bombshell, has 150,000 hair follicles on average on her head. Assuming every hair on Yang is the same length, her hair weighs 83.4 grams. Now for the second big problem, Yang's boobs. Since Ruby is an animation, it's safe to assume that they're most likely half spheres, or two thirds pi. Again, from the picture, the ruler measurement of Yang's boob diameter is 0.5 cm, which is a 0.25 cm radius. In scale to Yang's can height, the radius is 5.65 cm. Hence, the volume of Yang's boobs is calculable by 2 times 2 thirds pi times radius, which comes out to be 757 centimeters cubed. Using conversion rates on the values that I just got, we get values of 0.757 liters or 0.757 kilos. Therefore, Yang's actual weight, around a little bit, is 69.6 kilos. Second thing I need to find is the acceleration of Yang's body as she falls through the roof of the Grand Hall or her terminal velocity divided by time. Terminal velocity is when the force due to gravity is equal to the force due to drag. The average terminal velocity of the human body is about 53 to 56 meters per second. But I want to get a more accurate value. So Looking at the equation, I need to find the value of the drag coefficient of Yang's body falling through the air, the density of air, Yang's weight, acceleration due to gravity, and the area exposed to the wind. As stated earlier, Yang's weight is 69.6 kilos. Gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, which is questionable to a large moon with at least a third of it destroyed, but this is comparing to real life, so 9.8 meters per second squared is perfectly fine. The surface area of Yang exposed is mostly her back. Earlier I used this picture for her height, hair length, and boob size. Her back is 2.1 centimeters, her sh and her shoulder width is 1.25 centimeters. Using her cannon height of 1.73 meters again, her back is 47.5 centimeters and her shoulder width is 28.3 centimeters. So this area of her back is 1,344.25 centimeters squared or 1.34 meters squared. The density of air on sea level is approximately 1.225 kilograms per meter cube and this is without the variables of air density and assuming that we are at sea level which for Yang is not true but I'm not wasting time with more mathematics so 1.225 kilograms meters per second will do. For the drag of coefficient of human a person standing upright has a drag coefficient of 1 to 1.3 therefore for Yang, I'll assume her drag coefficient 
is 0.9. Putting the numbers into the terminal velocity equation gets a speed of 30.4 meters per second or 109.4 kilometers per hour. Dividing by the 62 frames or 2.06 reoccurring seconds, the acceleration is 52.9 meters per second squared. Now, applying Yang's weight and acceleration to the force equation, the resultant force Yang would be crashing through the roof and the grand hall table with is 3,684.1 newtons for each impact. That's only half the problem though. The other half of the scene is Norris Hammer hit and the crash upwards through the roof. The speed of Norris Hammer is calculatable by the speed triangle or V equals D divided by T. To find the height of the building, I need to reuse the terminal velocity and time from Yang's fall, which makes the Grand Hall 62.8 metres tall. Hence, velocity equals the 62.8 metres divided by the 27 frames, or a speed of 69.8 metres per second, and therefore acceleration is 77.6 metres per second squared. Applying to the force equation, Yang experiences 5,401 newtons of force, again, for both the hammer hit and the upward roof smash. Finally, the overall damage experienced by Yang after the four individual impacts is 18,170.2 newtons of force. Anyway, that's one scene so far, and next time I'll be solving the robot headbutt scene, along with Yang's natural punching power and shotgun power. And hopefully I'll be reviewing Ruby Speed. I have made a mistake on that video. If you enjoyed this video, smash the subscribe button with a watermelon hammer. Also, hit the notification button for more videos and soon to be gaming videos. Mad Scientist out.